Hello everyone. I understand that the class today was full of a lot of information and there was a lot of new things for you to understand. So I understand if you're feeling overwhelmed and there are there was a part of the class that uh, was not covered today because of lack of time. So I decided to make this small video to help you guys go through everything that we missed in the class today. If you're feeling overwhelmed right now with all the information, it is perfectly normal. I just want you to relax and look through this video. And if you have any questions, you can talk to me about that over email. So before I jump into talking about the part of the class that was missed today on digital identity, let me go over some of my class expectations from you from this class onwards. So basically, the way I have designed this course, I expect you to view all the videos and the signed readings for the next class before coming to the class. For example, in our next class in Mod Week 3, I expect you to look at all the videos and the readings that are assigned to you in Module 2 so that we have an active discussion and the the way i have designed it i do not have a lot of like articles for you to read i only have some very easy blog posts which are very easy to read and navigate and some very interesting videos so just spend like 30 minutes to an hour to, to skim through this 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 content before coming to the next class for module two and as always if you run into any problems or are confused about any assignment feel free to email me there are also discussion forums available in Canvas in the orientation module. And if you feel like there is some issue that might be common across all students, if you can go ahead and share that in the discussion forum, it would be beneficial for all of the other students as well. So let's get started with the digital identity assignments and the task. So what I want you to do is I want you to start with first reviewing the TED talk that's assigned to you in the module one. Along with the TED talk, I also want you to go through the readings because this will help you build a base or build an understanding of how our digital identity affects our personal life, our professional life, and how it can be used to our advantage and how we can stop the, our digital identity from making ourselves vulnerable to like different crimes, to like identity theft and all of that. So after you have gone through the TED talk and the assigned readings, I want you to complete your digital identity map. And I know there there is a lot of confusion around how to do the digital identity map or how to fill it. So what I'm doing is I'm sharing a sample digital identity map with you along with this uh, announcement so that you can look at that. And I'm going to go over it in the class right now as well. So basically in this digital identity map, you are supposed to answer these prompts based on your social media or your digital identity. So for example, this I have filled it right now based on my my digital identity. So for example, expression, what do I say on what do I use the social media platforms to say? So I express my views for various learning technologies using social media and I also share my travel experiences using social media. For example, profession, where I work, do I share that on social media? If I do, Yes, I do. I share my work details on my digital identity platforms and my, such as my Facebook and my LinkedIn. If you do not share your work details, just go ahead and say that I do not share these details. And then, like, just like that, you can still look at this. For example, like my hobbies, like I'm passionate about equestrian related sports and different technologies and gadgets. Audience, who is my audience? So I have a, have a, I do not have a public audience for my social media, so only the content that I share is only viewable my, by my friends, my colleagues, and my students who I have added on my social media platforms. So basically, this is how you're supposed to answer all these prompts, and you can look at this sample that I'm sharing with you so that you get an idea on how to submit this digital identity. In an ideal class, we were supposed to do it within the class and share it within the class time, but now since we weren't able to finish it during the class, you guys can submit it later by the end of this week. And you can uh, you feel free to, when, once you submit it, in the feel free to include this information in your digital identity assignment, which is what we're going to talk about next. So now coming to your digital identity assignment, it is very straightforward. All the details are already given on your canvas, basically and let me go ahead and pull it up so that you can see that so if i go to my module zero digital identity assignment here there are two parts of the assignment and you basically have to answer the questions to the part there is no word limit there is no like uh, limit on how many paragraphs you are supposed to write as many con as much content that could cover the answer to that question is appropriate for example which forms of social media do you currently use and which do you need to know more about? For example, I personally 
use LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And I would love to learn more about how Snapchat works, for example. Like I have an account, but I have never used Snapchat a lot. I don't use Snapchat a lot. So that's uh, that's as simple as it is for you to answer. Like how can social media enhance your professional or online presence? This is a question that you can give a lot more thought to because like how if you do not have or are you not you're not active on social media, how you can use the the, the power that social media gives you to enhance your, your online presence and help you in your career or in your profession. So the make this answer to this question would be would be personal to you in terms of what professional goals you have and just wrap your answer around that. And it's the same for all the other questions as well. So this is a very straightforward assignment. I don't see you guys running into any issues with this assignment, but if you do, please feel free to email me. So the next thing on my agenda is basically your e-portfolio. And I suggest that you do it in, at last because this is not relevant to our assignments related to the, the ad tech discussion and related to the digital identity assignments. I have gone in detail in class today about defining the educational technology field. So I will not jump into that right now in this video. So this video is about your digital identity part that we missed in the class today along with the e-portfolio. So with your e-portfolio, I tried to explain it and make it as clear as I could, but I don't know if I did a good job or not. So I'm, I'm going over uh, the e-portfolio creation in this video as well. So all you have to do is create two different Google sites. One is your student site and one is your course site. So what you do is you basically create a student site that needs to have these four these tabs up here. And then just use the information from this sample to create a site. And then connect this site to this second site that you would create, which would be the course website. And the course website needs to have these tabs. You can leave these tabs empty. So the way you will connect it to this is basically on this course, this website, your professional, like personal student website in your My Courses tab, you will write EME 2040 Introduction to Educational Technology and insert a link over here to this website. So how you do it basically is what I showed you in class. So for example, this is EME 2040 and I need to insert a link under this text. What I need to do is I select this text, click on insert link and over here I copy the link from my course website and then I go back to this website and I paste it here. And then once I click apply, it's going to publish this as a link. So when anybody would click on this, it will redirect them to this site. So you only need to submit a link to your student site and then I can click on this link and go to your course site. If you still have any confusion, feel free to email me. One thing that I missed for, uh, in the class today was how to publish them. So basically you are supposed to, after you are done creating your site, giving it a name and everything, you're supposed to hit publish. And when you hit publish, you make sure who can view the site is set to anyone. Because if this is set to private, I will not be able to view your template. And if I'm not able to view any link, I you automatically get a zero on that unless you reach out to me. So make sure that this is working. Make sure it is set to anyone can view and then hit publish. And once it's published, uh, just go ahead and, and look at that site. Like for example, right now, this is a random name. You can change this name over here. This is where you change the name. For example, your name, your last name is, uh, let's say, I don't know, Spencer. You say sites.google.com slash EME2040 ePortfolio underscore Spencer. So that's how you can name it so that it's easier for you to tell somebody as I mentioned in the class. And if you still have any issues with your ePortfolio, please feel free to email me about it. I would also be happy to take a look at your ePortfolio before your submission, your template before you submit it. So if you are confused that your ePortfolio meets or does not meet the requirement, please feel free to email it to me, email the link to me. I will take a quick look at it and let you know that how it looks. And I'm always available to give you feedback on any of your work before you submit it. And as I've always said, like before the deadline, I can help you in every way possible. But once you have passed the deadline and you come out to me without any genuine reason or excuse on why you passed the deadline, that I have very limited option to help you with. So I hope this email, this video helps you a lot. And along with that, I'm gonna give these details in the announcement as well. 
So you can read them and look at this small video to help you understand what digital identity is and how to build your e-portfolio. Again, just wanted to summarize that please go over the TED Talk and readings before you start attempting your assignments because they will help you build the basic understanding on how your digital identity influences your personal and professional life. Thank you.